morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today we need to check out the pre-release promos from Surging Sparks, because pre-releases are, like, really rushing up on us for Surging Sparks. Like, the set is out in three weeks. It's out on Friday the 8th of November. So actually probably a little bit less than three weeks at this point. And pre-releases start next weekend. Like pre-releases start on the 26th, 27th of October that weekend. So it's probably about time we talked about these pre-release promos and which ones you want. And of course, I'm going to do the thing I always do where I, I rank them. And I tell you which ones you should be going for. It's not quite as easy this time around. And it's also a little bit weird. But I think I'm going to start off at number four with Indeedy. This is not an easy ranking to make this time. But I think there is a clear three and four and a clear one and two. I'm putting Indeedy at number four. It's actually got a really nice ability. That when you play it from your hand onto your bench, you may heal 30 damage from your active Pokemon and have it recover from all special conditions. And in some meta games, this would be a ridiculous ability. We're not in that meta game. We had the Ordino from Boundaries Cross years ago. Which did the same thing but only healed 10. And that actually did see a bunch of play. But at the time, we had a bunch of paralysis-focused decks. So it was absolutely worth it. Th that is not where we are right now. I don't see a space for this in any decks at the moment. And I'm not saying we won't find space later on. But I'm saying right now, I don't really see a... I don't really see an opening for this. So, that's essentially where we are. It's not that it's a bad card. It's got oodles of potential, just not in the format in which we're currently playing. But not a terrible card. In at number three, I'm... Oh, actually, artwork-wise, we should talk about the artwork, shouldn't we? Uh, in terms of artwork, I'm afraid I prefer the original artwork. Chucking books around. Who, who doesn't want to go to libraries and chuck books around? Uh, the answer is don't go to libraries and chuck books around. That would be rude. In at number three, we've got Gouging Fire. And I do like the artwork here on Gouging Fire. I think this new artwork is rather lovely. Having said that, the old artwork is Akira Igawa. And at this point, you should know that I am a gigantic fan of Akira Igawa. So I hate to say it, but I actually prefer the non-pre-release promo version here as well. Sorry about that. I don't think it's, it's... Don't get me wrong, I like both artworks, but I prefer the original. Uh, in terms of what the card does, single energy 30. I mean, look, actually in a pre-release, this card is nuts. In a pre-release, this card is ridiculous. Firstly, being able to do 30 turn one going second is fine. It's not great. But free energy, 100 damage. And if your opponent's got four or fewer prize cards remaining, it does 70 more. But remember, in a pre-release, you start with four prizes. So actually playing in a pre-release, this Gouging Fire is absurdly good. Now, it is a rare card. So if you don't get it in your pre-release pack, you might not get it. But... It is a great card for pre-releases. Sure, it'll take you a couple of turns to get the energy on, and that'll be a little bit sad, but I do feel like it's totally going to be worth it, because, like, turn three, you're hitting 170, 170, 170, and you've got 130 HP. I'm telling you right now, this Gouging Fire in pre-releases is busted. In standard format, however, once we leave pre-releases, it's actually still not terrible, because it's still 170 damage on a basic single prize Pokemon. And you can use stuff like Magma Basin to accelerate the energy here. So it's it's fine. It's alright. It's not terrible. But I, I do think it's going to be, you know, an, an occasional one-off tech. And I do think people will play it, but only as an occasional one-off tech. But this is a weird kind of card. Like I say, in standard format, it's fine. 
but in pre-releases, it is absolutely busted. So there we go. Coming in at number two, and again, one and two are very close together. But I think at number two, we have to put Magneton, which of course is interesting because remember the illustration rare Magneton has actually been taken out of our set because it's going to be our Elite Trainer Box promo. And it's actually a very, very good card. Three and four on this list are cards with a little bit of potential. But the top two cards on this list are cards that I expect to see seeing a bunch of play. That's why I draw a very clear dividing line between the top two and the bottom two here. Because I do think there is a huge difference between your Ordino and your Gouging Fire that I think could see a bit of play. And then these top two that I think are legit great cards. Now, it's not the attack, because two energy 40 on a stage one is garbage. But the ability Overvolt Discharge, once during your turn, you may attach up to three basic energy cards from your discard pile to your lightning Pokemon in any way you like. And then this Pokemon is knocked out. And okay, fine, knocking out the Pokemon, not ideal. But you're accelerating free energy. And the obvious answer here, and there are other Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but the obvious answer here is Pikachu EX. Because although the energy has to be accelerated to a lightning Pokemon, it does not have to be lightning energy that you accelerate. So what that means is you can just get your free energy onto Pikachu and then just sit there being like, Hi. Yeah. Pikachu's got all the energy it needs. Got it. And I love this. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, nowadays, like, if you give up a prize, it's really not the end of the world. Because giving up a prize to your opponent means that all of a sudden you've got counter catcher. So you can give up a prize, but you've got Pikachu ready to go. And then you're gusting a two prizer off the bench and just really, really hurting your opponent. Or you can use it to activate a defiance ban, for instance. Go behind on prizes. Defiance ban means you do an extra 30 damage. And there's a lot of Pokemon around right now, like Charizard, for instance, where 300 damage isn't enough. But 330 damage will be. So you get your energy. You go behind on prizes but use that as an advantage. And honestly, like there's a bunch of other uses for this. Iron Hand is another great one. Because of course, Iron Hand takes an extra prize when it takes a KO. But you need four energy to do so. So here, KO the Magneton. Put three energy on. Attack for turn. KO a small Pokemon. And fine, you've given up a prize, but you've taken two and you've got a fully powered Iron Hands there. I think that's all right. Uh, Artwork-wise here, I have no strong feelings about either Magneton. Sorry. And then in at number one, we've got Chen Pao. And I think Chen Pao's gonna be great. I think Chen Pao has a huge amount of potential. And I feel very confident saying that. Because Chen Pao is Pumpkaboo. And Pumpkaboo saw a huge amount of play. And when Pumpkaboo rotated out, everyone was sad that Pumpkaboo had rotated out. Well, now we've got Pumpkaboo back. Except it's not actually just Pumpkaboo. It's Pumpkaboo with double the HP and an actual usable attack in a water deck. It's got an ability whereby when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may discard a stadium in play. It's phenomenal for stadium hate. And the thing is, whereas I look at Indeedy and I go, look, in a format where a lot of people are playing Paralysis decks and you need a searchable answer to Paralysis, this is good, but we're not there right now. Well, Chen Pao is exactly the same, except it's a searchable answer for stadiums. And we always need answers to stadiums. Stadiums are ubiquitous. They are always around. They are always there. And you're always going to need an answer to them at some point in some way. And that's the big difference here. Maybe you're using a bunch of special energy and you're just really annoyed that your opponent keeps bringing out Temple of Sinnoh for argument's sake. Well, wonderful news. And yeah, I know that you can just play a counter stadium, right? But stadiums are much harder to search and that's my point here. Pokemon are easier to search... Ergo, having this as an answer, in addition to what other stadiums you might be playing, 
is a very good thing. Uh, in terms of energy, I think this is the only one where I really do like the new version better. But I'm telling you, none of these are bad. I think your Chen Pao and Magneton are actively very good cards. And I think the Indeedee and Gouging Fire, although not powerhouse cards, do have a bunch of potential. And also, very important to note, in a pre-release, Gouging Fire is going to be great. There we go. I think I've made that quite clear. So now it's over to you guys. Tell me which of these you're hoping to pull from your pre-release. Tell me what your order 1 to 4 is. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Lawasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. Oh, and get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Jelena Renji, who's a very lovely person and has been supporting us for a while now and is awesome. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.